Welcome back to Why It's Expensive, the show where I come right here, pick a lens I wish I owned but can't afford to, and figure out why it costs so bloody much. This week, we're looking at tilt shift lenses in general because these things tend to be kind of expensive in general. This particular one is the Canon TSC 24mm L series lens. This costs just under $2,000. But if you look at the others, most of the tilt shift lenses that you're going to come across that are pretty much decent are going to set you back from $1,400 to the mid $2,000. And one thing I noticed, what seems to be a trend with this series is most of the expensive lenses we're looking at do not have autofocus. This is another $2,000 manifocus lens. Now tilt shift lenses are expensive for three main reasons. Number one, they need to have very complex mechanical parts that are very difficult to manufacture. Number two, they need to be made with a larger than usual image circle. And number three comes down to economies of scale. Now tilt shift lenses are tricky. If you've ever used one, you may have found it quite tricky to use and as tricky as they are to use, I bet they're probably even trickier to make. So as the name suggests, there is a tilting mechanism, that's the knob here, and there's also a shifting mechanism. Then if you look here, there is a pivot point that rotates the tilt mechanism, and there's another one that rotates the shift mechanism. So that's a whole lot of moving parts, and when you combine complex mechanical moving parts with precision optics, unsurprisingly, that's going to drive up manufacturing difficulty and also cost, which in turn results to a more expensive lens that we have to pay for. And due to the way tilt shift lenses work, they need to be made with a larger than usual image circle. Because when you are using the shift function, you are actually repositioning the image circle, so you need a bigger image circle so you have room to play around with. To put things into perspective, the shift mechanism works something like this. Imagine cropping into a shot that was framed wider than you needed to get the framing you want, and because there's all that extra image around your frame, you can still move it around and adjust your framing before the edges kick in. So what that means is, for a conventional lens, the lens's image circle only has to be just large enough to cover the sensor, but with a tilt shift lens, that image circle needs to be significantly bigger so there's room to move around in. So that, from an engineering and manufacturing standpoint, means bigger optics, more glass, more expensive to make, higher price tag. And finally, there's economies of scale. The tilt shift lens is not a lens that everyone's gonna buy. Most of us can live perfectly fine without it. It is a very specialized lens, catering for those who do architecture, landscape, or commercial product photography. It is a very niche lens, so very few photographers would actually go ahead and invest in one of these. So what that translates to, and it is a trend with this series as well, same case with many of the expensive lenses, that means the manufacturers cannot mass produce these lenses, which means smaller volumes and higher prices. So just to show you what you're paying for if you get a tilt shift lens, if you photograph a building, here's what it would look like with any old lens that's not tilt shift. The vertical lines have this perspective effect, like they are shrinking towards the top. If you photograph a tall building from a lower angle, this is almost completely unavoidable, which unless, of course, you can fly. And here's what it will look like with a tilt shift lens. The vertical lines stay vertical after you frame it using the shifting mechanism. It's also particularly useful for panoramas. And of course, there's also the tilt function, which is very useful for achieving deep focus. Here's a photo of a lovely row of L lenses. This is what it looks like without tilting any of the optics. Notice how only the first lens is in focus. Now, notice how it looks like after I apply a tilt to the lens. The whole row of lenses comes into focus. I did not stop the aperture down. Both images were shot at exactly the same f3.5 aperture. Now that happens thanks to something called the Scheinflug principle. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but that's a story for another day. But basically what happens is tilt shift lenses allow you to rotate your focal plane so they intersect your subjects so they come into focus even though they are at different distances away from the camera. That very same principle allows you to create the miniature effect entirely optically as well by tilting the lens upwards. So to wrap it up, tilt shift lenses are hard to make and they don't make a whole lot of them because not a lot of people buy them and that's why they're expensive. Tilt shift lenses, however, are quite a bit more complicated than our typical lenses, so they are a tiny bit harder to understand and use correctly. Perhaps I'll consider making a dedicated video explaining the physics of tilt shift. Let me know in the comments whether or not you would like to see that. Until then, the best way of actually understanding how one of these works is to actually pick one up and play with it. When actually researching for this very video, I was sitting here at Lens Library for a whole freaking day with this one tilt shift lens just playing around with it, trying to wrap my head around it. Because quite frankly, this is not exactly a lens that I would personally buy because I don't see myself needing it from a day-to-day -day basis, so it's not really a worthy investment for me. But it's really great that they have it so that anyone who comes and visits this place has a chance to try one of these out for yourself. And while you're at it, might as well check out the rest 
of their collection. They do welcome absolutely anyone to just walk in and play with their gear. For now, this place is in Malaysia, so if you're interested in visiting or dropping by, I'll leave some info down below on how to get here. So let me know in this poll or down in the comments whether or not you think tilt shift lenses are straight up overpriced or simply priced out of reach. Also, feel free to shout out any piece of gear you think should deserve a spot on why it's expensive. So that's pretty much it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.